Hello there, it's your favorite Uncle Josh, and we are back with a book review. Yes, I still review books, everybody. This book is called Heroes. It's part of the Misfit series by Jen Colonita. I love it. It's for middle schoolers. Yes, my grown behind read it because I teach K through eight. So I love it. Y'all gonna enjoy this review. Tag Jen and let's get into it, shall we? Okay, y'all. So I took notes. Sure did, because really wanted to get this review good and down. So the story starts off with Devin. Y'all know who Devin is. Devin Aria. Now, Jen, I don't know if he was around some black people, but Devin Aria's a black name. He was around some black people for that name. I was like, this is the blackest name I heard in a long time. And I've heard some names. But anywho, we're starting off with Devin Aria. And yeah, of course, y'all know Devin. She and her friends was out there to uh, beat the fairy godmother, Olavina, that name, Ola, Olavina, because she wanted to take over, you know, the kingdom because she's evil. That's just what evil people do. They just want to take over the kingdom. So that's what she did. So, you know, everybody wants to know what to do next and whatnot, because then we got Sasha there because, you know, Sasha's the reporter for Happily Ever After Scroll. So, you know, she's trying to get all the tea, which I get with Sasha because I'm the same way, too. This is my job. This is what I want to do. So as we're doing that, we have people wanting to know what Devin wants and what Devin wants to do because, you know, she kind of a leader, you know, this is, you know, she's the main character. But when she needs the distraction the most, a piece of the ceiling falls. Now, Devin does have a pet uh, dragon and her pet dragon was in the woods. Now, Devin's mom doesn't like the fact that she wants to be creature caretaker of that that she just wants to take care of animals, live in the woods, and live her best life. She wants her to be a princess and find a nice prince to live her best life with. Devin's like, no. And I gotta agree, Devin, live your best life. Now we do have um her wanting to actually go become that, but Emerson and uh, Snow are like, no, 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 no. You are gonna stay here while we try to keep everybody safe. And Devin's like, I'm good, y'all. Let me go. I don't want to be here. I do not want to be here. And now we got uh, Tara, who is the grandmother, thinking that everything is a... Tara, who's the grandmother of Olavina. I mean, he's the granddaughter of Olavina, thinking, y'all need help. Y'all need Jesus in the worst way. Why are y'all trying to reason with my grandmother? She's evil. You just won't have to take her out the game. But this is a middle school book, so you know you really can't say take her out the game. You know, you just gonna have to like banish her or something. You know, you really can't kill people. It's a middle school book. You really can't kill people. But anyway, Devin does receive a pamphlet, but then Snow's like, mm-mm, this could be Hex. Go get that pamphlet. And throw it away. I'm like, well, I'm gonna take my pamphlet uh, to the school that I really wanna go to. Like, come on now. Now, y'all know Devin don't belong at that school, and she belongs at Notting Hill, but her friends are trying to convince her to stay there. So then they go to the underground mall where they have for the royals, and then that's where she finds out that Royal Academy is not opening up to uh, royals, but open up to non-royals, too, because they're trying to, you know, be all-inclusive, you know, like integration. And they're trying to use the thing, uh, Charmed, I'm sure, the new drink place, they're trying to convince her to stay. But Devin does not want to stay, y'all, and you really can't force somebody to stay somewhere. I feel it, though. So Devin does no longer have her royal ladies are waiting, you know, Bryn. And at this moment, she's actually at a ball that's like an open invite. So, you know, everybody can get along with each other. And Devin decides to wear a pants. Like, she's wearing a pantsuit like she's Hillary Clinton. Which I understand because, you know, if you're working in the woods, y'all, the pantsuits will work. You got to get you a good pantsuit. However, don't be like Hillary Clinton and wear pantsuits all the time. No shade, Hillary. No shade. You know what, Shady? No shade. So here we have her talking to Clarissa, and Clarissa's like an Olavina sympathizer. Like she's all about fairy godmother. She thinks fairy god godmother can't do no wrong. She thinks there's nothing better than the fairy godmother. And I'm sitting over there like, you know, she's trying to like control, manipulate, and like trying to take take people out the game in order to get what she wants. But you make her seem she good. Yeah, she must be good to her, because here we have it. And then so. Devin is so wait a minute. They all get she's all getting into a fight. Next thing you know, Rumple still can cast that spell. And that spell um is kind of rewriting history. And now they're trying to get the fair uh fairy tale reform school to protect themselves. Now, y'all, here's the thing. I'm gonna interject this into this um review. 
What I would like to have seen, Jen, although, yes, this is a middle school book, and yes, I'm older than a middle schooler. On the contrary, I actually teach middle schoolers. But the thing I would have liked to have seen the most is what have, like, a chapter of Rumpelstiltskin casting the spell and a chapter of, like, the aft, like, what was happening during that spell was cast. Because in the very next part, we do get... Uh, Sasha and her happily ever after scroll telling like what happened. I would have actually liked to seen it. Like show me what happened with that. That would have made a good uh, chapter. And then Sasha could have summarized it up. But to kind of skip past that, that was not something I liked, Jen. Um, I get it. This is for middle schoolers. I get you know so many so much so many blah so much of a word count you can have for middle schoolers before you start losing your attention. But I do feel like other middle schoolers would have liked to have seen what. Like, that was like, 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 what happened? Like, how did he cast the spell? What did he do? Um, what was happening? What was going through people's mind? Were they rushing and running? That would have liked that. Like, now, this is a good place in a book where you could have possibly, like, or me as an English teacher would have possibly be like, okay, class, what do you think? Like, write a chapter where Rumpelstiltskin is sitting up there at the cauldron, turning it up, and everybody's running for their lives, ducking, everything's being rewritten. Like, write about that. I could have did that, but just like you could have wrote the chapter dear so now that they're in the underground mall they um so now that everything is being uh sh uh rewritten they actually are now going through the process of re uh writing everything like they capture rumple still skin to capture alpha this really could have been a nice chapter in the book very climaxy very much so with the uh, drama but now they're in the underground doing all their schoolwork in the mall, which is very interesting. And now they find out that they actually have to um, combine classes, like combine schools, like fairy tale uh, reform school and the Royal Academy actually have to combine in order to like keep everybody safe. Devin just wants to go and become do creature care. That's all she wants to do. But nobody wants to let her. Then she finds out she has to be in a room with Anna, Jilly's sister. And we all know Jilly from the fairy tale reform school. I really wish she would have she was in this book though. Like I feel like we could have got a Jilly in uh Devin book. Yes, you got that short story, Jen, but we could have got a Jilly and we could have got a um Devin like book. I'd have read that. Once again, Devin is trying to leave, but her parents aren't letting her. They think this is the most safest place for her to be. Y'all going to stop with this trying to force your kids to be who you want them to be and not letting them be who they truly are. So Devin does notice that Tara sneaks out, but Tara doesn't actually remember that she is um, sneaking out. Then we actually move on to like a charm to meet you day where uh, Headmistress Snow and Headmistress Flora are trying, the both headmistresses of the schools are trying to get the kids to, um, you know, hang out with each other. So they, um, suggest a flying competition. Uh, Devin is like, uh, thou shall not. That's not scripturally based. That's not God's will for my life. And they're like, come on, Devin, just do it. Just fly. But as they fly, they notice that they're seeing gargoyles and, you know, now the school is trying to shoot them down. Devin is Convinced that she can't understand them, yet she's understanding them. Anna understands them, too, because she has the same gift that uh, Devin does. So, yes, Devin lies and says that she couldn't hear the creatures. But Anna's like, yes, she can, because Anna, too, can hear that, hear animals. And Devin's jealous because she just wanted that to be her power. Devin is coming off as a jealous hater with so much envy in her heart. It might cause her heart to fail because when they get to, like, the class with Professor Nottingham... Devin is um Devin is trying to show off her skills and Professor Nottingham's like don't be a show off you need to learn to do other things and Anna's able to do stuff easily and then she sneaks off and then Devin follows her Devin follows Anna into a place where there's a baby gargoyle now Devin believes they're evil evil Anna doesn't. My whole thing is Devin Madagascar. Madagascar. And Madagascar means mind your business. Mind your business. So Devin finds out that she actually has to give a speech. And if she does it, Emerson's not going to let her teach her class that she really wants to teach about creature care. So she actually, you know, gets the help of like Bren and Kira to help her. 
But for some odd strange reason, during the night of the event, it doesn't work out that way. So what happens? The gargoyles end up attacking. And I'm like, well, dang. But for some odd strange reason, because Clarissa, who is a, a very godmother sympathizer, and Devin arguing, she knew what window to go through to get out. And she locked the folk in. Now, see, I ain't mad at um, Clarissa for that. Because if I go through a window... And I close it. I'm going to probably lock it too because you gargoyles are not getting me. And I'm sorry to y'all, but mm, 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 mm. that ain't my testimony. That will not mm, mm, that will not be me. I'm lock. Mm, mm. You going to let us in? Nope. Don't ask. Gargoyles are attacking them. Y'all got to read my notes. Gargoyles are attacking them and they're fighting for their lives. It's obvious that Clarissa is fighting for, is working for Olivina because she's an Olivina sympathizer and she likes how it originally was. Like, girl, things need to change. That woman was evil. She did not have your guys' best interests in heart. And even after you tried to help her, she still banished you too. And you want to be on her side? Girl, girl, girl. How is she not kicked out, though? I mean, if I'm headmaster of a boarding school and I hear that one of my former students, give me my y'all, I'm a teacher with a master's. One of my former students is big upping and supporting the former head mistress, headmaster that banished people and took people out the game. You got to leave because you just as much of a problem. As a headmaster, for all I know, you might summon her back up into my school and have us all killed. That's not what I can't do. I can't do that. I can't go through them emotions. That's not scriptural. That's not Christ. Like, see, you're not going to run, run my blood pressure up. You ain't going to make me anxious. anxious. You would have had to leave and I'm banishing your mom and daddy. You can't kick me. I can't. Break. You can't kick me. Yes, the heck I can. Deuces. In here trying to get us killed. She, we just trying to live. Tara, but back to your regularly scheduled program. Tara is revealing that she heard a voice telling her to do it. She's kind of in a trance. However, the gargoyles to leave the babies with um, Anna because Anna can understand them and they promise to watch them. And Devin agrees. What's interesting, y'all, is that it's clear this scene pretty much shows that Clarissa is still in contact with Olivina because at the beginning of this story, I didn't mention it. But Clarissa talks about how much she doesn't know who Tara is. She doesn't like Tara. However, she was the one that introduced Dragonfly to Tara, making it seem like, oh, I know who Dragonfly is. Keep that in mind, y'all. And I even wrote here to y'all, I don't trust Dragonfly because when Devin goes to talk to Snow, Dragonfly's in the office and says that all oh, Snow and them stepped out. And Devin comes clean about the gargoyles and all like tearing all that stuff and then when um what's her name um oh my gosh when she goes and confronts all the kids and takes the baby gargoyles out she lets it be known like Devin's the one that told me like why is you snitching why is you trying to sit over here trying to mess up my spot use the evil one use the evil one and you know she probably really is an evil one for doing that because she end up telling Devin like you know I'll I'll write you a letter of recommendation if you tell me. Y'all, folks, it's sneaky. So, y'all, here's the thing. They're able to go out and they know that Dragonfly is not to be trusted and that she's an evil individual. So, they go out to try to capture her. You know, uh, Prue, which I know, Jen, you named her Prue after Prue Hallowell from Charmed. I know. I know. So, Prue is... um deactivating the system and then they're trying to go and get the um the um the um baby gargoyles and the gargoyles because um where dragonfly is it oversees an event where um the royal where the royals are going to honor jilly and her friends for defeating rumpelstiltskin you know they get the the highest award given to those people in that kingdom and the only other person that's ever got it was red riding hood which is my mammy red riding hood is my mammy I am related, don't let the purple fool you. I am related to Red Riding Hood. That's my mammy. So that's what we're coming at. But then not only do we not find out that Dragonfly is evil, it's Fairy Godmother in a disguise, y'all. It's Fairy Godmother in a disguise. 
I was like, not fairy godmother. Uh-uh. One second. Back to your regularly scheduled program. They got fairy godmother to disclose her plan. And as all the commotion is happening and she's trying to control the gargoyles, they were able to bring the strawberries. You wonder what strawberries do? They break the spell of fairy godmother. So instead of this being like a gruesome demise to fairy godmother as it should be, the gargoyles just take fairy godmother away. Never to be seen again. Bravo, Jen. So y'all, here's the thing. So now we get, now during this um, book, I like it because you get the happily ever after scrolls that Sasha be uh, posting. And so now we got that uh, Devin's finally able to go to creature care school. I thank you, Jen, for not making that girl stay at that school. I was going to be mad if she's like, no, I had a change of heart. This is my home. This is where I need to be. No, the heck it isn't. And no, the heck you don't. Go to school and become the best creature care, care the creature caretaker that you possibly be in your life. She, so then now we got, um, you know, Devin meeting Jilly again. They met all those years ago. The, Jilly should have been in one of these books. Jilly should have been in one of these books. Yes, she should. She should have been there on a cool, but I would have much rather seen Devin and Jilly interact. Not prior to, uh, the fairy tale. Uh, FTRS and the Royal Academy Rebels dur during this, during this. And so Devin gives on her stuff and said, you can take care of the animals here. I'm going to go there. Um, Anna's mom's trying to get used to the idea of her daughter wanting to be a vet and not a princess. And Clarissa is expelled as she should be and her parents are moving to Wonderland. Ain't nobody tell y'all to work with villains? Who? Why would you think working with villains was going to work out in y'all favor? Why? Why? No, I really want to know why. I really want somebody to tell me because I'm not understanding it. I'm not. You won't have to explain that one to me. This is new. This is new. And Jilly realizes her life is perfect and that ends the series. I would just like to say bravo, Jen. You wrote an amazing series of books. I keep on saying hopefully she writes more, but I think she's done. She's wrote six books uh, well, you wrote in nine books total and two short stories. Uh, six of those books are referring to the fairy tale reform school. And three of those books are um, referring to the Royal Academy. I do hope there's another Royal Academy book, hoping and praying, wishful thinking. But I know there's not. You've written nine books throughout this whole entire universe. You've written uh, two short stories and it was great. I feel honored and privileged that you've allowed me into your mind allowed me to be able to experience your work. And I can't wait to read some more of your work. Yes, I've actually have read uh, Mirror Mirror and I've taught Conceal Don't Feel. I've taught Conceal Don't Feel actually to my high schoolers and they loved it. And I know you also wrote Go the Distance. I haven't finished reading that, but I am. But I thank you for all that you've done. Can't wait to read some more of your stuff. And thank you for joining this review, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, and share.